Miss Olympia, Thank you. legendary status. You were more than any women, man. You just ten, ten, I mean, ten around me. That's amazing. How does it feel to achieve that? It's no words to really express the accomplishments. Mm -hmm. I mean, each show that I go into, I take it as my first. So I don't take it for granted. It's a blessing to be able to be the best of the best in the world, man or woman. So. I'm still in awe of myself, mm -hmm. and just to hear it, and to hear it, and hear it, mm -hmm. it's like, is that really happening? You know, I thank the Lord, say, for allowing me to, you know, to walk the, that journey, because mm -hmm. you just start out as one to be on stage with the best, and to conquer year after year and win, there's no words to really dictate or express what you're feeling. I still can't believe it. Now, you last competed in 2014, that was your last win. And after that, they made an announcement that there's not going to be a women's bodybuilding anymore. They went for you, I think Arnold, basically all the, all the main competitions. So, how did you react to it when you, when you found out? I mean, it's hurtful to even hear that something that you started off as just something maybe a hobby, turn into some more of a sport in a career, to take something that you now have formulated as a career and have it just be wiped out. It's almost like you didn't exist and you don't mean anything. And knowing that female bodybuilding and male bodybuilding is the core of the sport, which is the demographic of everything that has been implemented into it, it's like, do they really not care about the women of our society? Because it's not only in our sport. It's in society in general, where we're not paid equally, we're not respected equally. So it's, it's very harmful, hurtful, in so many words. Are they, do you know they stopped it completely in all, are there still competitions left? Wings of Strength is still a high priority on the list that loves the sport for women. They conduct several shows a year. So. Olympia was the prestigious event of the world yeah. for the women, but I can see how the Wings of Strength have taken part and made that prestigious because the prize money is much greater mm -hmm. and they treat the athletes with much more respect. Not saying that the IFBB organization did not, but I just see that they're being a little bit more towards the athletes, which I have witnessed. No, basically they've created over a few years, they've created you know, women's physique and fitness and bikini, you know, all these things were created obviously. So, and then they basically got rid of the women's body, professional bodybuilding. Do you think something that they just didn't want to they didn't understand it anymore, or do you think people just want reactions to it? I can't feather or understand why you don't understand something that you created. How could you start it and then not complete, allow it to continue? So those are words that you have to express and ask people in those perspective spots, because I have written a lot of, about the whys and the ifs and how comes. Still, the answers come right back to money. And I believe in business, as a business owner, you are there to make an income, and revenue is important. But it's still, in the real of things, you have so many different other categories that allow you to make the money that you claim you're not getting from the women bodybuilding category. So, to answer your question, it's bullshit. Now, Hedy, I want to ask your opinion on uh, women's bodybuilding specifically, since it disappeared two years ago. Mm -hmm. What did you take on that? Well, the, the first of all, the women, I mean, uh, being that masculine, then you know, being that you know, low body fat, it uh, takes uh, much more than guys, you know. Mm -hmm. For us to be that condition is, is, is really difficult, you know, for women. Imagine this is it's hundred times harder. So that fact, I, I gave them, I mean, give them so much respect and I admire them. So in the business side, it's getting bigger and bigger. And you see the Mr. Olympia event is getting bigger. so huge now. Mm -hmm. So uh, I really didn't understand why, why they couldn't continue you know, women's bodybuilding, because we still have, you know, so much fun. We are still be able to see these top uh, women contender in uh, Wings of Strength, mm -hmm. which are world championships in August. Mm -hmm. So I think media, like uh, you guys, has to need to, you know, oh, do more cover. So uh, I want to do that. Yes. I'll be honest with you. I think, you know, a lot of men say, well, they don't see the beauty of women's body. Say, say it, mm. but then it's hypocritical because it was a sport, a foundational sport for so many years, and it was an objective that women bodybuilders had to achieve. It was an objective that they had to meet, so you became the best at it, obviously, right? So you dedicated your life to it. 
It's a bit hypocritical, I think, you know. I think they see us one-sided. Um, on stage, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not a fan of my look because my face gets real chiseled. And I know what to do to just make my, myself shine. So I pretty much cover my face, my cheeks, because it gets really defined. So they see one side of us, they see us massive, and they think women are not supposed to emulate so much mass. And our face are so chiseled, so we're so dry, so maybe depleted, so they, they don't find it, any beauty in, in it. And like he they said, it's either you like it, love it, or you hate it. But on the outside, when we're off season, we have very curvaceous looks. A lot of us take care of ourselves, very feminine. And I'll be honest, some women do disgust me. Um, they take it to a level to where it's not appealing, it's not attractive, and it's, it can go both ways. But to speak for myself, I'm very fashionate. I love to drink, I mean drink, I love to dress. I love to look sexy, I love to wear my heels, boots, you name it, you come to my home and you'll see probably enough clothes for five women with style. But I could take someone's critical standpoint and I'm fine with it because again, I decided to walk this path, no one else. So rather it's a great compliment or in between or bad, I'm good. And when you're good with yourself, everything else will shine. Now, recently there's been a lot of, some people also criticize, you know, the size and the mass of men's professional bodybuilding. Over the years, they say it's been increasing and bigger and bigger. And now they have men's physique, they have classic division, they have a bunch of different men's division, kind of like, you know, that are smaller than, a, you know, obviously, you know, the, the mass monsters, you know, the, the professional bodybuilders. Now, some say that it could be a way to maybe one day eliminate, you know, men's professional bodybuilding. Thing is a possibility of that happening? It'd be a cold day in hell, but that would be awfully strange. And I just think what they need to do, and, and I say this from day one when I was penalized in 2000, and I want to say 2011 when I actually got second at the Olympia because they, they had sent out a memo to all the athletes that you had to decrease 20% of your muscularia, muscularity area. And I, I didn't really understand it, so what I did is I came in smaller. I actually did look like a fitness. And I'm glad everyone in my camp told me, hey, you're in great shape, but you look like a fitness. Because I dropped a lot of mass, and I actually lost to Yaxina that year. And she was bigger. What I'm saying here is they need to send out a memo to each athlete from their previous contest, let them know, look, this is what you emulated on stage. If you return like this, you're going to be penalized. If you have the protruding stomach, if you're not contouring your physique based on your height, things of this nature, this is what's going to take place. But Yes. Instead of just saying, we're going to go away with it because the men are getting mass and this thing and this thing. It's just so much it's scrambled into one that's not making sense. So you can have all these categories because you have different athletes who want to reach a different peak. So having all these categories is good. That allows others to, get, to intervene. But to, to eliminate something that he they love, which is bodybuilding, myself is bodybuilding, and someone who likes physique, they're not thinking very smart. So I wouldn't think it's wise to get rid of it. Absolutely. Either or. And, uh, I agree with you. Why did you decide to make a move to 212? It's been uh, 10 years since I turned pro. Mm -hmm. Then uh, when I was in open, the way I was thinking was like, uh, even you are smaller, you, you could be still competitive mm -hmm. to the bigger guy. That's uh, how I did. And uh, that's uh, the way I sold. <laughs> I mean, uh, my... Uh, the sales point. Lots of time, people wants to, you know, support like right, the weaker, you know, weaker competitor. But you know, I could be st still competitive. That uh, that's how I I was. But now, after ten years, I wanted to be number one now. But open cross, of course, I could be number one. But you know, two twelve, I have more ch chance. I have more. But you did great. You just won. Right. Yes. You know, weight-wise, it's it wasn't much different actually. Even I was in open class. To be same. honest, yeah. To be honest, I was actually around 200 pounds. Oh, wow. But I never say that. I just, just yeah. I always say 220. <laughs> I was I'm 220. <laughs> That's how I how I how I did. I just tricked them. That's tricked how people. Nice. Actually, weight-wise, I'm bigger now, bigger than when I was open. Oh, okay. But. In order to come in a little lower, 212, then I come up, come back up. So uh, it's a little tricky. 
then a weight class. But my body is actually right 212 right in my structure. Because in 212, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of tallest guy, so uh, I can use my uh, strong point structure as a web, my weapon, and uh, I just want Arnold, then I can see the, the Mr. Olympia 212 right now, so mm -hmm. I really love being in this class, and uh, mm -hmm. I want to be number one. Is that the same level of motivation you had before? Yeah, actually, uh, I'm have more motivation because you know, just because I'm really close to the top. I don't say I wasn't that serious, but I've been competing like more than 20 years. I've I've done all you know all all I had to do, but now more serious. You feel you have a better chance now getting there. Right, right. So I actually I have more motivation than I drive right now. I think he rejuvenated himself in yeah. so many different levels for the last three. I mean, I haven't known he did a long time, but the last three, four years, it's almost another person. And his body, and it's, it's interesting because his body is so much mature. And normally as you age, you start to see, see the links where they're breaking down, the knees, the back, the little tears. But it's almost like he's a new person. He's so focused, I'm, I'm almost scared. So when we train him, like, he's like a machine. I thought I was a machine, but this guy never cuts off. My, my cousin actually promotes for Blackstone Labs online through Instagram. They're a great company. They have fucking Aaron Clark, Dominic Cardone, PJ Braun. Yeah, because it, those guys took th those supplements and that made them look like that, right? No fucking way, but that's the game, though. That's, the, that's, that's what it the is. That's the game. I know, but that's what I'm trying to but say. But they have They're all making... their shit is quality, though. If you're going to get okay, osteoporosis. From people that are normal. Oh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> you're driving me nuts. No, Shreds has nothing in it. Shreds has nothing in it.